What's going on, guys? It's Andy from VeggiePowerDaily.com, your online plant-based personal trainer and author, and I'm here with my co-host, Marcos Hurtado, a plant-based personal trainer. And today, we're going to bring you 15 ways to increase your testosterone levels naturally on your plant-based diet. So why? Why does someone like yourself want to increase testosterone levels naturally? What are the benefits of doing so? Well, a few of the benefits are increased muscle mass, leaner body mass, helps control weight, increases overall energy, better workouts, better training, and just an overall better sense of well-being. So today, me and my man Marcos, we're going to be sharing with you 15 different ways on how you can put this into action right now and increase your testosterone levels naturally what's going on marcos yo how's it going how's everyone doing good man i'm excited about today this is one of my this is one of my favorite topics to talk about and i've written an article about those long time ago it, it hasn't been published yet so i'm really excited to share some of these tips um especially because this is a topic that doesn't get discussed enough in the plant-based community so i'm excited about sharing some tips with you guys oh i agree too like it hasn't been discussed enough it's actually something i haven't spoken about myself neither so this will be like my first time presenting like my insight on maintaining testosterone on a plant-based diet and also while doing strength training too. Awesome, man. So the first thing I want to talk about how to increase your testosterone levels. First tip I want to mention, this is probably going to be the most important one out of them all, getting enough calories per day. Avoid staying in a caloric deficit for too long. Now, when you guys hear this, what exactly is a caloric deficit? A caloric deficit is when you consume less calories than your what your body burns per day and if you're in a caloric deficit for too long or if you're in a caloric deficit and it's not in intentional then this can lower your this can lower your testosterone for sure to a certain degree it might not be extremely different but you'll still see a slight drop in testosterone levels well does this mean that you shouldn't be in a caloric deficit well, that really depends on your fitness goals. If, you, if your goal is fat loss, you're going to have to be in a caloric deficit. But the goal is to finish whatever whatever fitness goal you have, whether it's fat loss, go over with quickly to ensure that you're not in a deficit for too long. Because to a certain degree, a caloric deficit can lower your testosterone levels. And especially if you're, if you're slightly under eating every single day and you're not aware of it, your testosterone levels. So I would... I would first find out what your caloric maintenance is and ensure that you're consuming enough calories. Our next tip that we have today is consuming enough fat. As personal trainers, when we interact with different ind individuals, we've probably gotten the uh, just consuming dietary fat make you fat. But the mistake that people typically make is they they assume that they assume that the, the fat that they consume is indirectly going to make them fat. But the thing is, they're not aware that eating too many calories, it's what, what's going to actually make them fat. And that's a common mistake I see. And so many individuals are avoiding dietary fat altogether to prevent fat gain. And that's affecting their testosterone levels in a, ne in a negative way. And if they simply consume all three macronutrients in a balanced way, that will ensure that they have um, a healthy amount of testosterone, overall health in general. And that's a common mistake I see. And this was a common mistake I made myself when I first started my fitness journey. I thought fat, I stayed away from dietary fat for a long time. And that's a common mistake I see that lowers testosterone levels quite significantly. And if you guys want to learn more information about testosterone levels and dietary fat, I'm going to go ahead and link in the description a study that I found on this very topic. And Mark, I'm curious to hear from you. Have you heard from Have you heard from a lot of people say that? Because as a personal trainer, I hear that a lot. Yeah, about dietary fat yeah. and fat gain. Yeah, pretty often. Like a lot of people tend to shy away from like avocados or like almonds because they have like high amount of fat. But time is like essential fats that we need to function healthily in our body. So a lot of people just probably like read like an article or heard from a like from an illegitimate source that eating fat will make you fat. So. People usually just exactly. hear one little tip, regardless of the credibility of the person, and they just roll with it. And every time they hear like the opposite, they get like a little bit defensive sometimes. But then once you explain it to them, like a little bit more clearly, how the uh, the benefits of eating specifically plant based fats, especially when when they're like in a pure form and it's uh, in its whole state, like for example, fresh from the avocado or like straight, straight from like from the nuts, yeah, from like a 
a peanut or an almond. It's like the healthiest way you can consume like a fat. Or even from seeds too. Dude, you nailed it right there because avocados and di- and different nut sources are great sources of fat. And not only are they great sources, they're also like super delicious. And they should pretty much be staple dietary fat if you're following a plant-based diet. Like what else is there? Avocados, we got peanut butter. Chia seeds, hemp seeds. Yeah. I don't mention hemp seeds like in every episode, I think, but yeah. Oh, actually, you want to stay away from flax seeds. I think yes. we slightly mentioned this in our last they podcast. Yeah. yeah, they've been known to lower your testosterone levels quite quite drastically, actually. I've, I I was planning on talking about this topic a little bit later into the podcast. Let me quickly go over what the study has found. So one of the studies was that um, there were three different women who went under, um, who were studied that were drinking uh, a type of tea that had mint in it. And it found that it lowered their testosterone levels by at least 40%. So mint is one of those foods that lower, lower testosterone. And that was very similar to the one that took place uh, um, regarding the tea. And that resulted in the same type of deal where it lowered their testosterone levels quite drastically. And I would avoid that. But, but mint is super delicious. You know, it's in a lot of different um, holiday treats and things. And it's really hard to avoid. But if higher testosterone levels are your is your goal, then that's one of the things that you unfortunately have to stray away from the best you can. I mean, you can't really completely avoid it because mints in like almost everything, but mm-hmm. it's one of those things that you kind of want to stay away from. And I was really, I was really shocked when I heard about this. Yeah, same here. I remember you mentioned it like a few weeks ago. About mint and flaxseed, those threw me off. I didn't know about that, and I've actually like remembered about it a few times while like going grocery shopping. Well, I don't really buy it too much, or whenever like out eating somewhere, out eating somewhere, and making sure not to get flaxseeds or mints or whenever I remember, whenever possible. And also sharing this with people that might be interested in knowing so too. Exactly, man. Exactly. So if you guys want to check out that study I found, I'm gonna go ahead and link that in the description as well about the about the study that took place on mint and flax seeds. I'm gonna link that in the description and I'm gonna kinda of go back to what we were talking earlier about dietary fat and people are afraid of afraid of um, that fat will make them fat is so how much? So that brings us to the uh, the question: Is how much dietary fat should you consume per day to um, to optimize your testosterone levels on a plant based diet? And what I've personally found is um, whether I'm dieting or whatever fitness goal I have, going below thirty percent of my daily calories, not fat, is kind of has a negative I- impact on my testosterone levels. For speaking from personal experience, I feel really tired and. And some of the other, some of the other negative experiences that come from lower testosterone levels. And I found that keeping my fats at around 35% to 40% of my, of my overall caloric intake helps me feel more energized. I have better training sessions, better sleep and tested this myself. I've had my, I've, I've compared uh, my testosterone levels to when I consumed little, little to no dietary fat versus having my overall calories from dietary fat be 35%. And, and the difference between the two is night and day, like in regards to how I feel, my overall productivity, just my training in the gym and just all together. And, and that's something I would advise, it, especially if you're dieting, I wouldn't fall into the whole fad that lowering your fat, dietary fat intake will result in faster fat loss. I wouldn't, I wouldn't, I would keep your fast at an optimal level where, where your, your hormones are still in, in check, you know? Yeah. Also, um, my question that my listeners might have is how do you calculate or measure your testosterone levels? Cause I know you mentioned how do you, uh, it's like through everyday activities, like training and just doing what we do, we're able to feel whether the testosterone levels or energy levels are either too high or too low. How could, um, like most of the listeners, if they're wondering, how could they measure it? Possible. That's a really good question. And what they can do is they can either get a blood test or yeah, I think that's the that's one of the most common ways I've seen. That's personally how I've done it too. I, I got my blood tested and the person they let me know like where I am and what are my levels were and things like that. I have access to that data. But as your testosterone levels are concerned, you will kind of let's say that someone doesn't want to go and get a check and you're experiencing the symptoms of having lower testosterone. That's how you know you have lower levels of testosterone. And when you have higher levels of testosterone, you're a totally different person than if you if you were to have lower levels of uh, lower levels of testosterone, and that's one way to tell too. If you're experiencing some of the negative symptoms, such as uh, like feeling really depressed, headaches, 
um, low libido, and just all those other symptoms that come along with it, those other like terrible symptoms that come along with it, you'll know when you have lower testosterone. It's not very hard to tell, but you can get it. You can get your blood checked and you can tell that way. And in another way to tell, it's just pure, just based on how you feel and your overall sense of well-being to be, to be fair. Mm, gotcha. That's yeah. good to know for our listeners, just so if they're feeling off, they just go get the blood check or just follow the steps that we're going over right now or doing both. Exactly. Mm-hmm. Exactly, man. That's a good call. You know, you got to look out for our podcast viewers, you know. Yep. So our next point is going to be on something that I've incorporated three years ago that that changed my life in every way in regards to overall productivity, overall helped me reach my fat loss goal with ease, the other benefits for my skin and just overall health. And I know that my, my co-host Marcos incorporated this into his own routine as well. And it benefited his life in so many ways too. And that brings us to our next topic is intermittent fasting. So what is intermittent fasting? Let me quickly go over that in about one or two sentences. If you guys want to learn more about intermittent fasting in depth, I'm going to go ahead and link an article I wrote on this topic and how to follow it on a plant-based diet. But so intermittent fasting is basically a period of time after you wake up, you don't eat right after you wake up. You delay your first meal anywhere from, I'd say, four to eight hours on average um having a having an eating window where you eat only during a portion of your day which is probably going to be around six to eight hours and you're fasting for a total of 16 to 20 hours counting how many hours you slept of how i incorporated intermittent fasting is i personally don't worry too much about an eating window about having to eat at a certain time each day i kind of basically just think of it as a fasting period where I delay my breakfast, my first meal around, I'd say four to eight hours into the day. And, and during the, during that fasting period is where a a lot of the magic happens. There's an increase in human growth hormone, testosterone levels. And they actually did a study on this very topic, um, of, of, in regards to testosterone levels and intermittent fasting. And they found that in individuals who were following Ramadan, they notice an almost like a triple boost in testosterone, a huge increase in human growth hormone. And these are significant changes too. And I'm going to go ahead and list the studies that I found on this topic as well. And if you guys want to learn more about intermittent fasting, go ahead and check out the an article I wrote about this and how you can incorporate this on your vegan diet. And Marcos, how was your experience with intermittent fasting? Do you want to quickly go over your your opinion on it and just how it kind of benefited you? Yeah, so I've been doing intermittent fasting since June, so it's been about five months now, and it's been awesome. I just feel, feel like lighter energy-wise, but I still feel strong at the same time, if that makes sense. Mm-hmm. I've seen yeah, um, I within it. the past two months, I started like increasing the intensity of my workouts, and I've seen an increase in both strength and muscle. Little by little, it's nothing too drastic, but like it's been very progressive, which is what I'm looking mm-hmm. for. I'm looking for progressive growth and nothing too extreme. Not to, no, I'm not looking to gain like five, six pounds in a month. If I gain like three or four pounds a month, I'm fine with that. And I've been able to do that while doing intermittent fasting. Intermittent fasting is a great tool that, that based off what you said, a, a lot of people assume that intermittent fasting is only for, for fat loss. But a lot of people, they they underestimate some of the benefits of doing it on like, a, let's say, on a muscle, gra- on a muscle growth phase or a, a lean bulk where you're you're eating above your caloric maintenance for the purpose of gaining muscle but people tend to overeat and itself helps them keep them in that slight surplus range to make sure that they're not gaining body fat and they're only building muscle during their um, lean bulk or muscle growth phase and that's one of the side benefits of intermittent fasting along with the benefits that we talked about which is increasing testosterone and growth hormone which are all great stuff um, if you're into fitness and just want to reap some of these benefits so the next one i want to talk about is something kind of something a little bit devious something that's uh that most people they don't they kind of ignore and that is all the unsaturated fatty acids also known as proof of foods and you and guys you guys really want to avoid these foods if uh higher levels of testosterone are your goal and i'm just going to quickly go over four different just going to call them proof of foods proof of I'm just going to call them that. And they're, they stand for polyunsaturated fatty, fatty acids. And some of the examples are flaxseed oil, soybean oil, walnut oil, and grapeseed oil. You guys really want to avoid these type of oils if higher testosterone levels are, is your, is your, is your goal. And if you're looking to increase them, you want to avoid saturated fatty acids and 
it's not just me that once again, guys, it's not just me saying this again. I'm going to go ahead and enlist a study for, for this topic as well. That I've heard something about grapeseed oil before and actually did use it a few times years ago instead of using canola oil or vegetable oil. So what I thought it was better just because I know how grape seeds are a great uh, antioxidant, but I didn't mm-hmm. realize that. I mean, grape seed oil is a great antioxidant, but I didn't realize that it turned into the pollen. So I think if it's, yeah, man. I don't really remember this. It's when you cook it or when it's, uh, but anyway, that you said, dude, you're, uh, just stay away from it altogether. <laughs> yeah, I, I would highly advise just staying away from that and just flax seeds in, in general. Into flaxseed oil and flax seeds in general, you want to stay away from those foods. Just, mm-hmm. just if you guys want to learn more about just poofa foods in general, I'm gonna go ahead and link an article on that, or you can just Google poofa foods and uh, and click on the first article that came up and that's a really informative article and i actually learned a lot about polyunsaturated fats in regards to testosterone levels so just google that and click on the first link that you find on google that'll help you help you learn more about polyunsaturated fats in regards to your testosterone levels the next topic i want to talk about is keep your fiber intake in check like don't i know that i'm, I'm just a little bit contradicting myself because i know that there's a lot of benefits of fiber but if you want to minimize your testosterone levels, you can't really overdo it on your fiber. I know that I'm on the plant-based community. We have a lot of fiber full foods and it's, it's kind of hard to keep that all in check, but I think that it's very, very possible. And, and to maximize your testosterone levels, you want to keep your fiber intake to around, I'd say about 25 to 30 grams per day, mainly from insoluble fiber. This will help you keep SHBG in check and proper proper digestion and estrogen metabolism. And I'll, I'm going to go ahead and link another article below on SH, SHBG in regards to your testosterone levels. And I'm going to link a few more studies on your fiber intake overall. And if you're looking to not over, if you guys are, let's say that, because the common thing that I, I was wondering when I first heard this as well is I'm currently following a plant-based diet. I'm looking for sources of plant-based protein, but how can I maximize my testosterone levels if I'm limiting my fiber? And and I've actually been doing my research on this and I found that lentils overall have the perfect source of fiber without overdoing it and they pack a ton of protein as well. So I found that green lentils to work the best in regards to this. And and I'm curious to hear from you, Marcos. Have you have you heard this before? Because this actually caught me by surprise as well about the about the fiber intake as well. That caught me off guard too. I, I've been doing my research a little bit more and I've and I recently found out about this topic as well, about limiting your overall fiber intake. And I think that most people it's really hard to overdo it on the fiber anyway, because most people don't get enough fiber as it is. But I think that most people they they don't have to they don't have to worry too much about limiting their fiber intake as long as they're not eating fiber with every single meal like you have oatmeal 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 and then lentils 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 you don't have to worry about it unless you're completely overdoing it but it's just something to keep in the back of your mind next time you you make a you make a meal decision or anything like that let's say that you're looking to maximize your testosterone levels and you have the choice between having oatmeal let's say uh versus like a bowl of uh bowl of rice well there you go so that brings me to my next topic of testosterone is get the majority of protein from whole foods let's just avoid all this processed crap like you don't need all these different things and i know that you're really passionate about 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 whole foods so you want to go over a little bit um audience and how they can get the majority of of their uh daily calories from whole foods markers so i was going with foods that are most base states so for example yeah they can still cook them like like beans rice lentils rice like cooking mm-hmm. find them like in a whole state and then just make sure you cook them in a way where it's not processed because most of the time when you buy like pre-packaged foods they are they add other preservatives to it, and it's usually they add preservatives so it can increase the shelf life. That way, they could have more in stock yeah. and be able to ship them. So, of course, just trying to find all the foods, your fruits, your vegetables, in your most whole state. So, stay away from like from like dried foods, canned foods, because they usually, like I mentioned before, they add preservatives. So, just even when possible, growing your own foods too would help out. And of course, it's okay if you do eat like processed foods like about once a week. Every once so in just, a while. Um, yeah, exactly. So, probably like making your diet, like for example, for a week. Your calories from whole foods, uh, from whole plant-based foods, should be about percent. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because we see all these chemicals on labels and all these ingredients, and we're not exactly sure what they are. And most of them are detrimental to our health, not just by lowering testosterone, but also for other um, health reasons too. Exactly, man. Exactly. You just kind of cut off for just a sec, though. Oh, oh. <laughs> so um. All right. You just oh, cut off cool. on the last part. We heard everything else you said, man. You're good. Okay. 
So in a nutshell, just when mm-hmm. eat as many whole plant-based foods as possible. Exactly, man. Exactly. That's one of the benefits of already following a plant-based diet because y- your diet is healthier than 99% of people as it is. And you can get the most out of it by by following some of the things that Marco has just talked about right now is keep is keeping your processed foods low as possible. I mean, we're only human. You can have them every once in a while, but but try not to make that your main focus. Like try not to uh, go out of your way to get frozen, uh, frozen refrigerator meals and all that crap. Just stay away from that stuff. And you should be fine for the most part if you're following a plant-based diet and you're, and you're staying away from processed food. Uh, something I commonly see among the plant-based community are fake meat. Um, mm-hmm. it just, it just sounds really disgusting to me because uh, I just don't see how fake meats and, and they're usually full of uh, PUFAs and additives in general, like we talked about earlier. So they're really best to stay away from, stay away from in general if you're following a plant-based diet. I just don't see the purpose of fake meats in general. If you've gone plant-based, the whole goal is to stay away from meat and not try to replicate. I don't know. It it just didn't seem seem like an ideal food from like a a vegan philosophy perspective. Also from the hormone optimization perspective as well, because it lowers testosterone and because it has PUFAs and different additives like we talked about earlier. I've tried before a few times before. It's like I said before, something okay, like maybe like you just say go to a restaurant. Mm -hmm. And so I think the best way I do it, the way I see it is I like to like go to like vegan restaurants with family friends that aren't on a plant-based diet, just so I could try something. And I guess it's like a good transition yeah. to uh, transition, quote unquote, to try like plant-based foods that have mock meats. That way they still have like a familiar taste. So it's good for a transition, but as a long-term, like to eat on a day-to-day basis, absolutely not. Not, it's not one of the best yes. ways to go. Like exactly, man. It's most likely to be modified. It. And also all the preservatives they add to it. So it's just a, a mix of chemicals that, to, that you don't want in your body at all. Exactly, man. You nailed it right there. It's an awesome transition food, like you said. Like we talked about in the last episode, transitioning into a plant-based diet, which actually hasn't come out yet. It's going to come out soon. But thing is, foods like that, they make as a good transition for people who are interested in following a plant-based diet. But if you've been following a plant-based diet for years, let's say, it's not a great food to consume on a daily basis, you know? And I think you nailed it right there because that's a really good point that you mentioned is it's a great food if you're uh, if you're planning on going plant-based or if you have a lot of friends that, um, that you want to introduce them to the lifestyle, maybe they try something that's maybe mm-hmm. of a fake meat, but it's definitely not something you would want to consume on an every day-to-day basis if, you, if uh, levels of testosterone and hormone optimization is your is your goal because once again like i said before they're full of uh poofus polyunsaturated fats and lots of additives and other chemicals and things that it's best to stay away from i'll just put it at that 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 kind of bring me to my next point thing has been going on for years and and especially among the fat loss community people who want to lose body fat they have this huge fear of carbohydrates and i don't know i don't know when i don't know when exactly this started but this has been going on for as long as i can remember so i was uh 15 years old i think one of my uncles he was trying to lose fat and then we were at like a family uh family get together and we would always have foods full of carbs like vegan rice crispy treats and he couldn't eat anything at the event because he was going low carb and he was so afraid of carbs that kind of uh pride himself the whole time and that's a common mistake i see among people who are trying to lose fat and not only are you going to be miserable in general and you can only do that for so long and studies have shown that get going super low in carbs does have a negative impact on your overall for all testosterone levels and your hormones as well as a whole because if you guys watch any any of our episodes you know that no matter what your fitness goal is we always encourage a balance of all macronutrients and this goes mm-hmm. back to that same fact if you're going lower in anything that's gonna just mess up your overall hormone health that's just what it is if you go low in fat if you go too low in fat same deal if you go too low in carbs same deal so just keep your overall macronutrients is as in a balanced way even beforehand i keep hearing about this but i think it originated from processed carbs from like um like simple carbs so from like white rice black flour i guess it carried over to all the carbs so every time exactly. i like I go to someone like i meet someone like a client or, or whatever go somewhere i meet someone and they say this low carb diet i always like joke around and tell them so you don't eat vegetables and fruit exactly low carb those are carbohydrates so because there was a guy who actually thought that fruits made you fat like fruit <laughs> made you fat. i've heard of that before they said oh yeah sure it doesn't make you fat i'm like 
Yeah, because it has fructose in it, so it has but to be no, fat, right? No, not at all. Because <laughs> exactly. I know some um, some vegans that like follow the raw diet, the raw vegan diet, and it's mm. a high consum, very high consumption of fruits, and they're very lean or thin. So, and they've been doing it for months, if not years. Well, both months and years, and doesn't affect them, doesn't make them bigger, no. And they're perfectly fine. They're heavy. I mean, no, healthy, not heavy, healthy. Mm -hmm. So a good starting point is keep your carbs around forty percent of your calories. You can use this as a general baseline and just play around with it depending on your goal or caloric intake. Not only are carbs important for your training, because how the hell are you going to train on a low with intensity on low carbs if you're if you're a natural weightlifter that is quote unquote if you're a natural weightlifter you need your carbs not only is it is it important to support training but also your overall hormones and your testosterone production so keep your carbs around 40 percent play around with it based on your goal and i'm just gonna leave it there at that and whenever you're afraid of of things like inanimate objects you know that you're you're kind of doing something wrong don't be afraid of like things that are introduced among the fitness community so that brings me to my next point is consume mainly starches to fuel your training i think we kind of went over this a little bit earlier um you need your starches to fuel your training and to have good energy levels overall and a good source for this is white rice it's really nutrient dense and white rice is a great source of carb to have post-workout i feel that when i eat white rice on the days that i have white rice i just have better training sessions as a whole and and consuming starches can really fuel your training and then training with intensity has then has a ripple effect of increasing your testosterone levels as well so they kind of go hand in hand. If you have higher in starches, you have better training. If you have better training, you have optimal hormone optimization. So higher testosterone levels, they kind of go hand in hand. So keep your starches pretty high on your training days, at least. Like we said before, don't fall for the myth of going low carb. I would never go low, low carb. Even if I was even if I was 100 pounds overweight, I would never go low carb. Probably won't. And this is from experience too, guys. I've done low carb before and I felt like absolute shit. Like my, my overall mood was super bad. Like all the, all the negative effects you see of lower testosterone, just basically copy pasted with the, with the low carb diet. Diets like the ketogenic diet and things like that. But that's another topic of its own. I never suggest a low carb diet for no matter what your fitness goal is. And so that so that kind of brings me to my next point. Consuming nutrient dense fruits to get a good amount of micronutrients and fructose really does help you consume a good amount of micronutrients, which are also essential for higher levels of testosterone as a whole. And great place to start is consume a good amount of fruits and vegetables. I think that's the most important part. When you're consuming enough fruits and vegetables, you don't have to supplement with any like vitamins and multivitamins. You can if you want as a bonus, but if you're consuming enough of those a day, you don't have to do any of that. And find that a lot of people have uh, problems with their testosterone because they have a lot of nutrient deficiencies and fruits have great micronutrients. So it's as simple as that. Just consume more fruit and don't be afraid of the fructose in it and don't fall for the fads again. Like, like fruits make you fat kind of bullshit, you know? <laughs> yeah maybe dry fruits like it is never, yeah. Yeah, yeah 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 maybe dry like, fruits yeah stay away from those uh processed fruit juice yes raw fruit mm -hmm. nope yeah stay away from dry fruits and fruit juices because those are just full of sugar and they take away the fiber which actually is what making you full and especially if fat loss is your goal like the calories from from fruit juices and these dry fruits they add up like have you ever had those like dried mango fruits that like it says there are 100 calories, but then you look in the back, it's like... Mostly from the sugar. Yeah, it's full of sugar. And just for the little piece, you get like 100 calories. And there's no way, there's no way in hell that I'm only eating that little piece, you know? Like, it tastes so good that you want to you eat the whole pack. And and that's... that's so quite added, man. Yeah. And it doesn't keep you full either. It's a, it's, a, it's a simple carb because of all the added sugar. So, yeah. Exactly. Yes. Yeah, consume real fruit. Just consume real fruit. Apple, bananas, pineapples. Those are all my favorites. Just consume those and you don't have to worry about um, fruit juices like you said. and stay the hell away from dry fruits if uh if fat loss is your goal that's the only fat loss tip stay away from dry fruits speaking from experience you don't want to go through the you don't want to go through the struggles that i did trying to include these um trying to include these different foods into my diet even though they don't keep me full supplementing with the b12 and calcium can be helpful it can uh it can help with any micronutrient deficiencies 
which is actually the next thing I was going to talk about was uh, take care of your micronutrient deficiencies because that's one of the causes of, that's one of the things that causes people to have lower levels of testosterone in general. So fixing those different deficiencies can help and you can do that by consuming more fruits and vegetables and supplementing with the vitamin B12 and calcium and that'll help you take care of that. All right, so this brings us to our last and final tip that we have for you guys, and that is training with intensity on compound lifts, compound movements. If you guys watched our first episode, you guys know that we are really encourage you guys to start incorporating more strength training and focusing on compound lifts, especially if especially if muscle growth is your goal. And, and if you're a natural athlete, that's the, that's the only way to go. The studies have shown that with testosterone, but just in general, your, uh, your muscle growth has a very close indication to how strong you are and and this is what i this is what i preach this is what i'm programs and all my courses are solely based on and that's strength training and common mistake i I see among people that they want to optimize their testosterone levels or whether muscle growth is their goal is they focus so much on isolation movements those bicep curls those different cable movements those pec flies that you see your favorite bodybuilder on instagram performing these aren't the way to go if if you want to maximize your testosterone levels because studies have shown time and time again that there's a bigger anabolic response from training with intensity on compound movements such as heavy weighted dips, heavy weighted chin ups, incline presses, your deadlifts, your squat, your rack pulls, all of these things, they exhibit a higher anabolic response to to this style of training. And especially if you're training with intensity as well, you don't have to do very much volume, but if you're strength training on um, lifts, then you're exhibiting a higher, higher boost in your testosterone levels if you're through your training. And that's uh that's something I really want to mention within this episode because within the context of this episode, because I found that it's so important to not only maximize the nutrition side of things, but also maximize your training side of things to overall your testosterone levels naturally on a plant-based diet already is and you kind of nailed it right there, man. And the one tip I can offer making your strength training a little bit more challenging is training with intensity on strength training, like we said, induces a bigger release to social levels. So one way to do so is with reverse pyramid training is basically when you start, when you warm up, when you do a proper warm up and you perform your heaviest set first, typically that's going to be in the four to six rep range. And then you drop down 10%, you add a rep. That's going to be in the 8 to 10 rep range. And then you drop 10% and that's going to be in the 10 to 12 rep range. That way, as a natural weightlifter, you're training in all rep ranges, um, typically in a 4 to 10, depending on the different exercises. And this really improves the overall intensity of the exercise, which in result in better muscle and strength gains. And as a result, um, higher levels of testosterone as well, which is like a bonus bonus. You know, Mm -hmm. you're getting the release of testosterone and you're training properly, meaning that you're doing it with proper form. You don't want to have like cheat form. You want to take care of that if you do and lower the weight and work your way back up. But exactly there you guys have it. There's 15 different ways on how to increase your testosterone levels naturally. I'm going to list every single link, the study and articles we talked about related to this topics right into description below if you guys enjoy this podcast feel free to write a review comment and let us know what we can improve upon on our show also if you'd like to learn more about optimizing your health and your fitness on a plant-based diet i put together a list of the seven crucial plant-based protein foods to build muscle and strength faster so if you want to take advantage of these seven crucial foods like so many plant-based individuals i've worked with have then click the link in the description to get my free copy of the vegan protein cheat sheet, a quick and easy download. So many plant-based individuals just like yourself are taking full advantage of the benefits of these foods right now, including myself and my co-host. So check the link in the description and I'm gonna go ahead and link all the other articles and studies that we talked about in the description as well. So you can go check it out and we will see you guys in next week's podcast.